From death frisbees to nuke bracelets, these predator weapons will make you say yaucha. Hunters never leave home without a hunting knife, even if it's just to dress an animal after the kill. Just like the hunter's knife, a predator never disembarks his ship without a nifty set of wrist blades. And these puppies are definitely meant for up-close and personal encounters. Since the original 1987 film, every predator has done battle with a set of wrist blades. Some predators have even taken their wrist blades to the next level, like the one seen in the first Alien vs. Predator film. These alien hunters practically have swords attached to their wrists. In fact, it's a wonder they can even maneuver with wrist blades as big as the one seen in AVP. As far as iconic weaponry is concerned, wrist blades are a true staple of the Predator's arsenal. They don't just maim and kill, they also help work just as effectively in skinning the kill and claiming a souvenir for the trophy wall back in the Predator ship. In short, never get close to a Predator. Actually, you don't want to be at a distance from them either, for other reasons that we'll get into in just a moment. Basically, if you see a Predator at any distance, you can kiss your butt goodbye. Remember how we said you didn't want to be at a distance from a Predator? Well, this would be why. It seems the creature has ranged combat locked up nice and tight with this part of its deadly arsenal. The shoulder cannon is an ultra-accurate firearm that targets and shoots a deadly explosive or plasma-like blast at the Predator's target. Prey appears to be the only film where a shoulder cannon isn't used, as it likely hasn't been invented by the time the prequel takes place. However, the original 1987 film shows just how devastating the shoulder cannons can be when Jesse Ventura's Blaine has a hole punched clean through the middle of his torso. Then Bill Duke's Mac thinks he has the drop on the creature just before the targeting system zeroes in on him. Unfortunately, his head ends up getting popped like a grape. Mmm, gross! <laughs> Mop it up! It does not look like a fun way to go. It feels like an ancient weapon, but it's one definitely fitting for an alien species dead set on enjoying the thrill of the hunt. The spear has been used on multiple occasions throughout Predator history. It is typically seen as a shorter shaft before extending into a full-length battle-ready spear so the Predator can carry it around with ease. While the Predator didn't use the spear in the original film, the weapon made its memorable debut in 1990's Predator 2. In traditional Predator lore, the spear is referred to as a combi stick, but in Alien vs. Predator, a spear makes a return in a different form. While a combi stick is initially used, the Predator later creates a spear out of a xenomorph tail. In Prey, the Predator actively uses a spear-like weapon that is likely a primitive version of the combi stick. It appears to have two separate pieces that can attach together to form a spear or bladed staff, but the two parts can be separated and dual-wielded at the Predator's convenience. One of the Comanche warriors in Prey finds this out the hard way as he's impaled against a fallen tree with the spear. It's a pretty slick weapon that claims a lot of lives. What could be more practical as a hunting device than a deadly frisbee? Well, predators have constructed just that for use during the hunt. Okay, so the word frisbee might be a bit of an oversimplification, but it's hard to ignore the resemblance. The disc does seem to have a layer of advanced technology imbued in its design, as it can target hostile forces and even boomerangs back to its owner after doing the deed. Predator 2 is the first time such a weapon is seen in the movie franchise, playing a memorable role in the climax. In the ice-cold meat locker near the end of the film, Special Agent Keys is bisected in a grisly sequence in which the Predator outsmarts and nearly kills the entire unit. Lieutenant Mike Harrigan later takes the disc for himself, ultimately slaying the Predator with its own weapon by manually plunging it into the beast's torso. Other iterations of the bladed disc have been seen in cinematic Predator history, such as in the scene from the much-reviled Alien vs. Predator Requiem, in which an overconfident teen girl runs right into the device. This time, however, the disc pins her to the wall, acting more like a high-tech ninja star than a self-returning bladed disc. In the remote jungles of Central America, Dutch and his mercenary crew embark on a search and rescue operation. This is the basis for the 1987 film that started it all. These commandos think they're well aware of the danger they're in for. Heavily fortified and armed hostile units populate the jungle and surround the target. Surely a gunfight will ensue and there will be casualties, but a third party enters the fray, apparently attracted by the unfolding conflict. 
It doesn't have allegiances, and it most certainly doesn't pick sides. Any armed combatant is fair game in the Great Hunt. Across all the hardened, gun-toting individuals walking the jungle, Dutch outlasts them all. He has a bone to pick with this alien hunter, who's seemingly obliterated his entire team. Using his wits, he bests the Predator in a game of cat and mouse. Of course, the Predator won't go down quietly. Choking on its own blood, it activates a device on its gauntlet that appears to be a countdown timer. <laughs> With his enemy denying him a victory lap, Dutch has to sprint for survival to escape the Predator's self-destruct strategy. After detonating, the explosive appears to have the same effect as a small tactical nuclear weapon. It's a devastating device that ensures the Predator vaporizes not just his own technology, but any living thing in the area. This helps ensure that these aliens remain nothing more and nothing less than a mysterious legend to any culture that may have encountered them. Nearly 300 years before Dutch's encounter with the Predator, the Predator of the Prey era used explosive drones that emerged from his gauntlet and sought out hostile targets. It's a devastating one-shot kill, sure to vaporize any life form contained within its blast. In Prey, the alien hunter employs the use of this weapon during a fight with French fur trappers. Earlier in the film, this band of ruffians had captured Naru and attempted to squeeze information from her about her encounter with the beast. Refusing to aid their cause, she and her brother are strapped to a tree and used as bait for the otherworldly hunter. Instead, the hunter pursues the fur trappers lying in wait and begins systematically slaughtering them one by one. Towards the end of the massacre, the Predator finishes off the last men standing by leaving behind its gauntlet. Curious, the fur trappers inspect the device. Apparently, the proper flight instinct doesn't quite register in their brains, and they're caught completely off guard as three drones appear and target the poor saps for destruction. The Alien vs. Predator films have been critically panned and are often seen as a stain on both franchises. However, there are still a few great concepts within the films as well as stellar creature designs and practical effects. In fact, one of the Predator's coolest weapons is actually only seen in Alien vs. Predator Requiem. The Predator in this film sets out to clean up aliens running rampant in rural Colorado with a whip during a monstrous clash at the film's climax. This is no ordinary whip, however. The entire length of the weapon is laced with barbs, and it seems specifically designed to combat xenomorphs. In fact, it's very reminiscent of a xenomorph tail. Co-director Greg Strauss confirmed it was actually made from that very thing, so it can withstand acidic blood and maintain sharpened edges capable of ripping opponents to shreds. Prey manages to breathe fresh life into the franchise while still feeling every bit like a Predator movie. One of the many ways it does this is by introducing us to one of the coolest defensive gadgets ever used by these cunning hunters. This Yaucha has a fancy shield, tucked away in one of its gauntlets. When engaged by enemy fire, it can unfurl the shield at a moment's notice. It can also be used offensively. After tangling with a group of fur trappers, the Predator pins one against a tree in a chokehold. It activates the shield, which emerges from its gauntlet and decapitates the man. Interestingly enough, this shield has a rather distinct inspiration. As director Dan Trachtenberg explained to ComicBook.com, I teased a while ago that I took inspiration from the latest God of War video game, and those two things are in the trailer. One is his shield that you see briefly. Fans of the popular 2018 video game know that protagonist Kratos makes use of a slick shield that unfolds from a wrist gauntlet. It seems Trachtenberg is a bit of a gamer, and he found the perfect place to fold the particular brutality of God of War into Prey. As a hunter, any gadget that can stop its target in its tracks would be most useful, enabling the Predator to deliver a finishing blow with ease. One peculiar weapon in the Predator's arsenal is the net gun, which can actually be lethal all on its own depending on the target. The first use of this weapon on screen came in Predator 2. When the Predator assaults a cartel in a high-rise apartment in Los Angeles, he uses this net gun on one of the gang members. <laughs> The net gun is employed once again in the first Alien vs. Predator film, where a Yaucha uses it on a Xenomorph. As the net constricts around the alien, its acidic blood saves it from total annihilation as it eats away through the net. The alien is then later seen in the film with a crosshatch scarring on its head from the weapon. Prey shows us the earliest form of this device, however, it's not a gun at this stage, but simply a net device that the Predator lobs at its enemies. 
Another staple of the Predator's hunting arsenal is the cloaking device which bends light to give the creature the effect of being nearly invisible. It is perhaps one of its best tools for stealthy maneuvers, enabling it to stalk prey without being seen. Most Predator films depict the creature spying on and stalking its victims before finally moving in for the kill. This wouldn't be possible without the cloaking technology affixed to its armor. In most cases, the cloaking armor can be disrupted by debris, water, impact, or perhaps most memorably, blood. As hostiles engage the alien hunter, cracks in its cloaking device become apparent. While it's a useful tool, it definitely can be spotted if a human knows what they're looking for. Still, a predator wouldn't exactly be the alien species we know without the ability to creep through the trees almost invisibly. One of the most iconic traits of this infamous movie monster. The mask is perhaps one of the most iconic elements of a predator's arsenal. While the first predator seen in the 1987 film had a simplistic and smooth mask by design, future iterations would drastically change, providing different looks for alien hunters. Aside from just being a mere accessory, the masks also aid the predators in their hunts by providing them with distinct visual capabilities such as thermal imaging and zoom functionality to target prey. In most iterations, the mask also contains the predator's targeting system for its shoulder cannon and other weaponry. In some cases, the mask itself is armed with self-defense measures and is capable of lethal fire as seen in 2018's The Predator. This is demonstrated when young Rory McKenna takes the alien mask and goes trick-or-treating with it. When one rude bully decides to throw a can at the little kid, the mask instantly retaliates. <laughs> the Predator masks seen across the span of the franchise are wildly varied and serve several purposes. For that reason, they're essential to the Predator's hunting gear.